What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. This is a question that's very near and dear to my heart, uh, and it's one that I'm sure will spark a conversation that I'm hoping in the comments will be a very respectful one. So keep it clean, keep it respectful if you want to talk. Um, so let, let me go ahead. I, I'm just going to read the question here. Uh, please do smash the like button. Uh, this is one of these videos, guys, that... Uh, you know, I, I hope when I say it's going to do well, I don't mean we'll get a bajillion views. I mean we'll do well in terms of uh, people actually having a conversation about this kind of thing. So anyway, this is a conversation a lot of people are afraid to have. You guys know me on this channel. We kind of cover everything that people are afraid to talk about. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why you guys watch this channel. And it's one of the reasons I love you guys so much. So let's go ahead and read this question. It was posted on uh, a video, which was my most requested video ever, which is dealing with haters and clicks in academia. Uh, and here was the question. The question uh, was from a gentleman named Yaya. Uh, Yaya says, I'm a religious Muslim myself doing a PhD in economics. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think religious academics should and should not share about their level of religiosity. Should we remain neutral and minimalist in religious expression so as not to get a bad reputation? Any specific challenges you can share? Yeah, this is, this is a really great and a very deep question. And uh, I've been thinking about it here over the last few hours about exactly what I want to say on the topic. And I'd love to hear more about your experiences so far. Uh, first, I want to commend you for just asking the question. And I want to communicate my respect that this is something where your faith is, is that important to you that you want to consider this challenge, right? Um, so in me being a Christian, um, you know, in Old Testament, uh, there was this dude. Dude's name was Jacob. Jacob was basically renamed Israel. Uh, and so a lot of people think that Israel is just like the name of a geographic country and these sorts of things. Or they've heard of the 12 tribes of Israel and these things. And they just think it's a geographic location as opposed to an individual and the progeny of that individual, right? Um, but the thing is, is that the, the rough translation in Hebrew of this word, Israel, is the one who wrestled with God or the one who struggled with God. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, this is what I deeply believe that anyone who is religious, doesn't matter what religion it happens to be, all of us are called to be actively wrestling with and internally struggling with uh, whatever we believe in, in terms of God, if you are a religious individual, uh, even if you are not a non-religious spiritual person who, you know, believes in the universe and karma, these things, uh, it's very important always that we stay, as the Gestalt psychologist would say, active at the boundary, quote, quote, of our, of our beliefs, of ourselves, of our uh, unique personal relationship with whatever is beyond ourselves, whatever is greater than ourselves out there in the universe. This is obviously a deeply personal decision. Some of us were raised in a religion and then fell away uh, and now uh, don't have any particular beliefs or they're agnostic and they're just not sure and they're exploring, which honestly I think is great. Uh, some people are atheistic and remember that I was a really hardcore atheist uh, until I was 22. I mean, I was really, really atheist. And one of the reasons why I'm passionate about answering this question for you is that I think that I can be honest with all of you guys and tell you that when I was a 22 year old kid um, who thought he knew everything and thought he was super cool and thought he was brilliant in academia and these things, but wasn't any of those things, um, that being an atheist almost gave me like a sense of power. And I really viewed anybody who was religious, uh, especially Christian, I viewed uh, them as uh, people who were kind of overly old school and uh, outdated and antiquated. And all they did was focus on these rules uh, that didn't make any sense because they were so old and they worshiped this book that was, you know, so many thousands of years old. And they believed in the Easter bunny and the tooth fairy and like these sorts of things. And that's what, what that's what God was to me. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just one of these things where that was my hardcore belief. Uh, and almost like individuals who may be, you know, deeply, deeply evangelical, unshakably evangelical Christians, I was an unshakable atheist. 
And um, I, I tend to be a pretty black or white thinker. You can ask Daria. Daria sounds serious now, right? Uh, I, I tend to be a pretty black or white thinker. And, uh, and when it came to, to religion, uh, it was it fell on that one side of like hardcore atheist. I don't believe in anything, period, right? Um, and I was really adamant about it, to be honest with you. Um, and when I was in graduate school, I think that the ivory tower, I was at Oxford for the first doctorate, um, I really believe that the ivory tower and the uh, deep liberal bent that the overwhelming preponderance of universities have, uh, especially in Western countries, especially in the United States uh, and Canada, uh, what happens is that the concept of being simultaneously an objective academic uh, and also religious is, uh, these are mutually exclusive things. You can't be both at the same time. Uh, and sometimes it can almost feel like, you know, like being persecuted for your faith just because you have a faith. Doesn't matter what that faith is, but just having a faith period uh, is almost demonized. Uh, and this is a real challenge for people. Um, one thing that you asked of me, Yaya, is, you know, any specific challenges you can share. I would say that the biggest challenge that I face is people, for God knows what reason, wanting to fight me in my beliefs uh, whenever I just happen to express that I'm a Christian. Um, I, I'm confident, mate, that, that for yourself, as you should be, uh, that you're not just a, a Muslim. You're a proud Muslim, right? Uh, and I'm, just, I'm not just a Christian. I'm a proud Christian. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm going around trying to make little Christians or something like this or, you know, force my beliefs on other people. Certainly from a, a, a biblical New Testament view, that is antithetical to the faith of Christianity, the idea of essentially trying to force other people into the faith because uh, Christianity is more than anything else. Uh, it is very deeply about a personal relationship with God. And it's almost like somebody coming up to you and saying, I'm going to force you to be friends with, you know, this person, you know, who you've never met and you who you've never had a conversation with. I'm going to force it because it's the truth right? Uh, that is ridiculous. You would never do that in real life. Uh, and this is, to me, one of the many, many, many beautiful things about Christianity is that it's so deeply personal and so deeply relational. Uh, I have no problem talking about my faith whatsoever. If people want to hate me for it, then uh, ironically, Bible says that's going to happen anyway. So, hey, what are you going to do, right? Uh, you're going to get persecuted, right? Even Christ says it in the New Testament, right? He basically says, if you follow me, you're going to get persecuted, right? So, you know, pick up that cross and follow me. That's the idea, right? Um, doesn't matter what religion you believe in, though. You know, I'm very respectful of all religions. Uh, and it's one of these situations where me and my personal religious beliefs, um, they influence my day to day and they deeply influence how hard I work. Uh, it deeply influences the fact, yeah, yeah, that I make this channel and, uh, you know, the ad revenue from this channel is to, man, it's totally negligible. It pays for like my gas, maybe, you know, 50% of the weeks out of, you know, the year. It's not the reason I do this. I was talking to Daria the other, week, uh, the other day about this, that like the reason why I make this channel more than anything else is so that when I'm gone or when eventually other things happen in my life and I become a dad and I'm just too busy and these things, that, um, that I can have these things here for you. I can have these conversations with you five, ten years from the time that this video or any of the videos I make are being published. Somebody asked me the other, the other week, and they were, they were being respectful about it, but they said, why do you keep making so many videos when the view counts for most of them is only like, you know, two, three hundred views? Um, this is something, yeah, it's two, three hundred views or whatever after like a couple of days or a few weeks or even a few months. But what I have ended up finding on this channel when you take a look is that videos that I never expected would be popular over time get like logarithmically more popular. And they're often ones that I never expected to be those ones that were popular. So the important thing for me is to be able to stay engaged with you guys because I really care about you. Um, and to be able to keep making these videos and making these videos is deeply influenced by my belief in my duty, my obligation to be of service to you. Um, and so that, you know, again, this is just a way that, you know, religiosity permeates my personal life and my personal journey. Um, I don't expect people to respect my religion. I don't expect for people to agree with my religion. Um, but at the end of the day, I also can't control anybody else. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, if people want to hate you for being a Muslim or hate me for being a Christian, uh, they're going to do it anyway. Um, and so this is something where, you know, I deeply desire for you to embrace your faith. 
Um, regardless of what faith happens to be, if you watch cha other videos on this channel, you'll know that one of my seven so-called dimensions of optimization for all of us as human beings is your spiritual health. Embracing that and uh, really getting it as an anchor in your life, especially if you're going to be going to grad school. Oh my goodness. Please, some kind of anchor in your life. I really don't care what faith it is. Uh, just please anchor it, anchor your life, right? Um, grad school's hard enough, right? But here's the thing, right? We were talking about this concept of wrestling with God, right? The fact that you asked this question, yeah, yeah, shows that you're wrestling with God and wrestling with your spiritual identity. And I have so much respect for that. I think that it is fundamentally dangerous for anyone in any religion to feel too comfortable with their faith and with their with their belief. Why? Because we're called to struggle with it. Because that struggle is what breeds wisdom. Uh, and wisdom is what all of us should be striving for in our lives uh, as we get older, as we develop personally. It's never the end of the journey until the day that we die. Uh, and the idea here is pretty clear, which is that, yes, from the outside, your faith may look totally stable. But if we zoom into the microscopic level, we get to that cellular level that nobody can see. Here's my phone, right? So it's like you look at, you go to the cellular level, the atoms all over the place. They're not static. They're moving. It is in a state of what we call di excuse me, dynamic homeostasis, right? Dynamic homeostasis is where your faith should be at. I deeply believe that, right? I actually have a whole separate YouTube channel that's only about uh, like my views on like Christian relationships because a, a lot of you know and some of you don't know that I used to run uh, the only all-male matchmaking team in the United States in terms of being a matchmaker. I was very passionate about it, very passionate, particularly in the church, uh, about teaching people about attraction because nobody talks about that. They talk about dating and relationships, but they don't talk about attraction. I run a men's ministry, very passionate about it. I love mentoring people, I love mentoring you guys. Uh, you know, anybody who wants to, you know, book one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, go ahead and, you know, visit the website below. That's not the point of this video. Um, so should, so let's, so that's the second thing. Any specific challenges? That's the big challenge, Yaya. It's just like, just saying that you're a Christian. I have people all the time, whenever I bring it up, they just want to like fight you. They just want to be like, well, yeah, but don't you think da 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 And, you know, there, there's no scientific evidence for da 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 and blah, blah, blah. They, they just want to fight you, right? And it, it's there's nothing you could say to be able to change their mind. Uh, I'm a deep believer in apologetics and these things. Uh, life is short. Sharing your faith is a beautiful thing. Some people, if, if you're just not going to change their mind in these things, it's still worthwhile having a conversation as someone of faith to be able to, like in fencing, to be able to parry any of the blows, it's like Tai Chi, any of the blows that they try to put on you as a religious person, but you need to be careful how you do it and always do it from, a, from just like in Islam, right? From, from a perspective of peace and love, right? Uh, is what it's all about. It's the same thing in Christianity, right? You're supposed to come from a place of, of love and of peace, right? You know, when you do anything, and this is a mark uh, it's, it's a mark on you that you are a godly individual, right? Um, I come from a non-religious family and it has nothing to do being a good person, a nice person, a loving person, a kind person. You don't have to believe in God to be any of those things, right? Uh, you don't, right? And uh, as somebody who was deeply atheistic in the past, uh, I was a kind, loving, gentle person then as well, even though I thought I was super cool. But now I just am super cool. So there you go. Right. Daria is laughing. I don't know if it's because she thinks I'm serious or she, she's laughing down there. She doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on. Uh, so anyway, um, so should we remain uh, neutral and minimalist in religious expression? Here's the thing, Yaya. When it comes to neutrality, when it comes to objectivity of planning research studies, uh, getting IRB approvals, so ethics of board approval, carrying the studies out, uh, and then publishing the findings. Uh, you need to be as objective as possible. Never forget that writing and uh, thinking are very similar, right? Uh, we have so much responsibility, Yaya, as, uh, as writers in academia, yourself in e economics, myself in psychology and psychiatry. We are given the opportunity to essentially... Um, to take over, almost like taking over a computer, to take over someone's brain by them reading our writing. So we need to be persuasive, eloquent, simple, and straightforward in our method of communication when we write. It is our, it is our burden and our honor 
to be able to do that, for other people to trust us that much, right? Uh, and I do not believe that any ideology, I don't care if it's religious or anything else, there are ideologies in academia th itself um, and we need to stay as objective as possible. I do believe that. In terms of the way that you carry yourself in your personal life, when you go to conferences, when you interact with other people and these sorts of things, I think it's very important to be true to who you are. And if who you are is a religious person, uh, is, is a proud, devout Muslim, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that you should never shy away or be ashamed of your faith uh, in academia or outside. People want to disagree with you, God bless them. That's fine, right? But that does not mean that you need to change such a fundamental, beautiful belief. People usually who desire to attack faiths are individuals who do not understand them. I, uh, I usually, in my head, I get frustrated. I wish that the Bible wasn't called the Bible. I wish that the Quran was not called the Quran. I wish that our holy books were not called the same titles as they've been for millennia now. And the reason why is that I think that if you renamed any of these religious texts, something like the, you know, the biography of God or the autobiography of God or, or an exploration, fundamental exploration into God or anything like this, you would end up getting a, a whole new crop of people who are curious. And they're not reading the religious texts to become religious. They're reading them because these books that are so many thousands and thousands and thousands of years old, they contain so much wisdom. It doesn't matter that you don't believe in whatever it is, right? There is wisdom in there. And, and we as people who should deeply desire to always be building and to always be becoming wiser in ourselves and in our lives, we can always learn from these kinds of texts, regardless of whether we take on their beliefs, their attitudes, the behaviors that they suggest if they take a legalistic perspective. It's fundamentally unnecessary. But that is not to say that just because your beliefs don't align with the beliefs of these texts, that these texts are useless, because that's just not true. So that is what I would say uh, in terms of sharing your level of religiosity. Totally, you know, in German, we have this term called Geschmackssache, which means a matter of taste. It's a total Geschmackssache thing, right? Um, am I somebody who's running around out there every time that I talk to a fellow academic to tell them that I'm Christian? No. Uh, if, if it happens to come up in conversation, I'd happily talk about it. If people have questions about my faith, I love that. I, I would love to be able to share Right, And I, it's not that I'm sharing to proselytize to anybody. It's just something that I care about. It's almost like if, you have a, if you're really passionate about racquetball and somebody mentions that they also like racquetball, and then you can have a fun conversation about racquetball. Right? It's the exact same thing except at a deep fundamental level. Right? As you know, not everybody who goes to mosque uh, necessarily believes the same thing. Not everybody who goes to church necessarily believes the same thing. Uh, it's mold. It's you know the same hallway in multiple rooms, right? As C.S. Lewis would say. So we can't assume that just because somebody else happens to share a label with us that they share all of our identical again, you know, thoughts, attitudes, beliefs, you know, all these things, behavioral codes. Um, but in any case, yeah, so that's, that's my response to that. Again, thank you for asking your question. This is something that I care very deeply about. I'm very passionate about it. Um, if anybody does want to check out my other channel just for giggles and these things um, and maybe uh, get to know me a little bit better, I will put down in the description below a link to my testimony. If you don't know what a testimony is, it is basically what Christians use, uh, people of other faiths too, uh, but it is uh, basically the way that I personally came to faith. A lot of people have issues with people in academia also being people of faith. Like I said, they think that it's mutually exclusive. I can tell you for a fact that it's not. Um, and so that's what I got to say about it. So thank you guys so much for listening. As always, I love and appreciate you. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.